six black horses led the cortege through Bethnal Green along streets the craze once ruled with fear, with modern-day EastEnders lining the route. The procession moved onto Valance Road, birthplace of the craze story. It was here that the Cray twins, Ronnie and Reggie, their older brother Charlie, were brought up by a doting East End mother. In the family's tiny terraced house, they ran their empire of crime, extortion and protection rackets. In those days, the Cray twins, known as the firm, were notorious for their violent means of persuasion. Back in about 1996, I moved to London, England, and I stayed in the East End of London for roughly six years. I think the last six months of it, I was living in a little bit North London. But during that time when I first moved there, it was Shoreditch, then Bethnal Green, then uh, eventually uh, Myland, Bow, and Stepney. I mean, I, and then the last was in the Angel. And uh, since I moved to London, uh, I was, you know, I'm into sightseeing. That's what I've always been into. I was running the, the company Graveline Tours, and then I moved to London. So because of my visa status, I was forget for uh, bidden to leave or work for um, until well a year and a half. I think it was eighteen months. I was forbidden to leave the country or to work as I was applying applying for residency, and uh, and I was going stir crazy, of course. So uh, I decided that I was going to try to write a tour of London, and just the word weirder most interesting things I thought that Americans should learn when they go to London. I mean, there was always the Jack the Ripper tour and the Tower of London and all that sort of business. But I thought, you know, there's the show business aspect of it. Jimi Hendrix died there. Vivian Lee died there. Judy Garland died there. So many people died there and so many interesting things happened there. And since I lived in the East End, uh, I was very interested in the Cray twins who were mobsters, uh, identical twins. They, they grew up roughly maybe six streets over from where I was living. And I read the first, the first book I read, I think was this one by Charlie Cray, who was the older brother. Uh, there were the twins and then Charlie was about six years older than the twins. And I started going through it and finding all these streets that I knew and, and, uh, and different buildings that I knew of, restaurants and pubs and the gymnasium and their school. And this was all like walking distance from me. So I was reading the book and I was going out into the streets and, and doing, you know, just kind of poking around and taking pictures, actually. These are, I found some of the pictures I've taken uh, of the East End and particularly a couple of events, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. So uh, I decided an unusual tour would be uh, having locations and maybe having the criminals themselves or the people involved themselves uh, do a tiny clip on, on tape of, um, you know, saying, because I, I met Richard O'Brien when I co-wrote the Rocky Horror book, so I, I thought maybe Richard or Pat Quinn, who was another one I spent a lot of time with, who played Magenta in the original production, I thought maybe Pat would record a little, this is the Royal Court Theater where we started the Rocky Horror Show in 1973. Um, yeah, you know, things like, I, you know, my ex knew one of the butlers, a guy who played the butler or the manservant in The Prince and the Showgirl who knew Marilyn. And I thought, well, I get him to talk about The Prince and the Showgirl and Vivian Lee, right around the corner from where Rocky Horror was uh, created, is where Vivian Lee's house, where she passed away. So, you know, these sort of first-hand accounts. So one of the one of the things I did was I wrote some uh, rather notorious characters and uh, back you know back in the day I did that I wrote you know like John Wayne Gacy and I got a letter back from him and I bought a painting I, I you know I wrote Tex Watson uh, I, I for some reason was interested in that well you know for whatever reason there's psychology there's all kinds of psychology there. And I knew that Ronnie Cray of the twins had passed away already and Reggie Cray was still alive. So I thought, well, I'll write him a letter and see if I could get him to say something about the Blind Beggar Pub. The Blind Beggar Pub in Whitechapel near the Jack the Rubber business uh, is where Ronnie Cray, who died in 1995, killed uh, a gangster by the name of uh, George Cornell. And I thought having Reggie Cray, <laughs> I don't know why, thought Reggie Cray... Uh, on, you know, maybe an audio recording of him on the phone saying, uh, this is the Blindbecker pub where my brother Ron, because they were convicted of it. It's not like, you know, they, it was, they talked about it quite freely, as did a lot of their associates. 
uh, this is where my brother Ron killed George Cornell on, on such and such a date, which ultimately he was convicted of and spent, you know, life, the rest of his life in prison. Anyway, uh, I wrote Reggie this letter saying, do you think I could uh, interview you over the phone because I'm thinking about doing this tour? So bizarrely, I lived in this building. At that point, we lived on Shacklewell Street in East London, right off Brick Lane, uh, really close to Valence Road where the Cray twins were born or where they were raised. And um, it was a new building. It was called Equity Square. And they, uh, they had a gate that you needed a remote to get into. And then you walk in or park wherever. And then there was another door that you needed the key to get into. And then you go up to the stairs to where our apartment was. And there was a locked door. And it was like two days after I wrote Reggie Cray a letter. Um, slipped underneath that door. The double locked doors was this envelope. And inside this envelope was an invitation to a Cray Twins supporter night. Now, <laughs> I was like, oh, how cool. You know, Reggie Cray wrote me, you know, got these tickets to me. And everyone I know is kind of going, yeah, no, <laughs> that's not cool at all. And it's like, I really wanted to go. And they're like, no, Re Reggie Cray knows where you live. That's not a good thing. And this ended up, you know, slipped underneath our door. And uh, so no one would go with me. And uh, so I went on my own, and it was this Princess Alice pub uh, in uh, Romford, Romford Row, which is, you know, east-east. And, um, and I went by myself. <laughs> no one would go with me. So, you know, here I am. I'd only been in the UK for maybe six months. And I, you know, I'm, you know as an American, you know, we're, we are less, you know, I don't know, less self-conscious, I guess. I know I walk in with this, like, I don't know, I was wearing like a red coat or red jacket. I don't know, puffer. I don't know what kind of jacket it was. But anyway, you know, you walk into this pub and it's all guys in black, black ties, black, you know, it's all, you know, sort of gangsters. And, uh, and I, you know, I could tell it's gotten a lot of weird looks and they were, it turns out that Charlie Cray was in prison. He, he was convicted of, um, trying to sell cocaine, I think. And he, and they were trying to raise money for his, uh, legal defense. That's the Cray twin supporters night. Although it was a Cray supporter night, not the, not the twins. Uh, this is about Charlie. So after a while, there's, there's a table over there and it was, um, they were selling, you know, videos and books and things like I, I've got all kinds of books on the Cray twins. Uh, so many books on the Cray twins. I mean, I haven't read them all to be honest with you, but having books makes me, makes me smart. You know that, right? <laughs> and, um, and even, even Reggie, Reggie Cray's uh, philosophy. But anyway, uh, so, um, so anyway, I go up to this, this table where they're selling videos and, and, and books. And I was, I was just looking at it and she, and the woman behind the, uh, behind the table goes, who are you? And I, Cause that clearly didn't fit. And she was very nice. And I said, um, my name is Scott. I no, I said, uh, I wrote Reggie a letter and, uh, and I got invitation. She goes, are you Scott? And I said, yeah. And she goes, Reggie told me about you. He wants, he wants your number. He wants to call you to talk to you about whatever you wrote him about. And I'm like, okay. So I don't know. I gave, I think I gave her the number and I, I went home. I didn't buy anything or anything like that. But the next day I got a letter in the mail and let's see where it is. Cause I've got, I got so much stuff here. This is it from Reggie Cray to me. And you can see how the writing, Reggie's writing was very, they didn't, I don't think they knew how to read or they, they were very, very basic. Uh, you know, they didn't need to read or write. So it was very hard for them to read, but this is written the 21st of February, Friday night, 1997. It says, Scott, sincere thanks for the letter. Hope you got the tickets in time. Perhaps we can do something together. Uh, I'll, phone something phone to me phone number and have my friend oh I see so he sent me his friend's phone number to call he says you can boy it's he is really difficult to read all with you can discuss all with him hope to see you soon uh Something, something, Reg Cray. 
So I figured I'm going to get this letter. I think I, you know, I, I think I gave the phone number to that lady at the uh, at the Princess Alice Pub, but Reggie never called me, and I was kind of, you know, I, I relieved in a way, and it was it was sort of titillated as well. I thought that would be really interesting to strike a strike up a, you know, a friendship with Reggie on some weird level. I mean, again, it's it's inappropriate it's bizarre they were gangsters they made their living in protection protection rackets they were convicted of murder they were you know tortured people and uh, so they were despicable individuals but there was something about their charm in the east end because you know it was a tight tight fit community and they'd gone through the war together and the east end of london got bombed big time during the war i mean there was still remnants they're still finding you know, un, un, unexploded bombs in the East End from, you know, from the attacks during the, during, uh, the war. So there was a camaraderie in the East End, and the Cray twins, you know, respected their mother. They loved their mother. Their mother was fiercely protective of them. And thus, the neighborhood was fiercely protective of the Cray twins, and they were of the neighborhood. So if any untoward people came in, you know, criminals, I mean, basically, the Cray twins were criminals, but if any other criminals came in and hassled somebody, the Crays would take care of them. Uh, as was demonstrated at, at Reggie and uh, Charlie's funerals, because when they when their bodies were brought out of the church, you know, people were applauding. When their bodies were, you know, carried on their hearses uh, through the East End, you know, people would applaud because the Cray twins, they would say, only kill their own or only hurt their own, meaning fellow gangsters or criminals, and they love their mom. And that 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 is sort of the East End, I don't know, code, I guess. Um, yeah, I think that has a lot to do with this. So there's a sentimentality to that era in, in the East End of the Cray twins. And, you know, they protected each other, but they also ran protected. They protected other residents of the East End, but they also ran protection rackets. So anyway, back to this tour business. Um, I actually couldn't do the tour because, well, here's the other thing that that's... I contacted a tour company called Evan Evans, and... I wrote them and asked them if they wanted to do a sightseeing tour with me. And they're like, sure. So we had meetings. I wrote a tour. They even put this out in a brochure that uh, Evan Evans said that they were going to do this celebrity tour of London. And this is my tour. I wrote this tour. Uh, and, you know, we had meetings and everything. And, you know, so this is all very, you know, it was all above board. I mean, these are all, I kept, I kept all that correspondence. You know, we're ready to go with the uh, celebrity tour, et cetera, et cetera. But because of my residency status, and I, I, I wronged the tour company. I should have been more upfront with them. But because of my residency status, I couldn't work. They told me at the last minute, you can't do this. So I had to bail on the tour company. But interesting to note, who did come up with the tour, who was very good friends with Reggie Cray. A couple of months later, a guy, a gangster by the name of Mad Frankie Fraser, who was also convicted of mayhem, torture, murder, spent 42 years, I think it was 90 years in prison, certified insane. Uh, Mad Frankie Fraser started a tour of gangland East London which is funny. So I always kind of joke that Mad Frankie Fraser ripped me off, but um, I couldn't really, couldn't really say that. But, uh, but I was interested in the Cray twins. So Charlie Cray, the older brother, died in, uh, on the Isle of Wight and while he was in prison for cocaine dealing. And I, and his, his funeral was held at St. Matthew's church, which was just down the road from me. So I went on the day of his funeral to St. Matthew's church and Charlie Cray, who used to date another legend of London, Barbara Windsor. Here's a picture of Barbara Windsor and myself. A very awkward, very awkward meeting with Barbara Windsor, I'll tell you about. And uh, and uh, so I went to Charlie's funeral. This is a picture of where Charlie died, actually. This is the prison on the Isle of Wight uh, at St. Mary's Hospital. And that's the prison where Charlie died. And this is Charlie's funeral at the English, uh, English Brothers uh, Funeral Home in Bethel Green Road. And this is them taking Charlie's casket out. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the pictures are in kind of a weird order. I, I, I was doing it on the date stamps on the back. But this is uh, Charlie Cray's funeral, them taking his casket out of the uh, funeral home. And they put his, now he had a regular motor, you know, car, automobile hearse. Reggie, later on, had the six black horses. 
uh, gent. You could see they another tradition that they do, it's a British thing, is where they, they spell out letters in uh, flowers and put them in the hearse or, you know, arrange them around, around the grave. But this was the funeral cortege going through the East End of London. You, a traditional East End funeral is, you know, they take your body in the box uh, past your old neighborhood. So they took them past the where they grew up in Balance Road, although um, the house was gone. It was an empty lot. They went past their gym. They went past their old pub, the Carpenter's Arms, uh, and, uh, and then ultimately to St. Matthew's Church, which is where it was held. Now, Reggie was actually here for this one. They let Reggie out of prison for uh for uh, the day to go to um charlie his older brother's funeral uh, ronnie cray the uh the other twin died in 1995 in prison in broadmoor prison Broad broadmoor prison is for the psychologically you know <laughs> is deranged a uh a uh, a term that you can use uh, politically correct. I don't even know, but it's a it's a psychiatric hospital because Ronnie was was borderline psychotic, um, you know, a paranoid schizophrenic, um, and and gay actually, or he would say bisexual, but just kind of interesting because he wasn't a, he wasn't ashamed of that, and that was in the sixties and the fifties in London, and these are tough guy gangsters. So admitting to that is pretty pretty um, interesting. But I think this is the. Um, yeah, this is the Carpenter's Arms pub where it was right around the corner from where the craze grew up. And this is where they would handle a lot of their business. And here's Charlie. You can see gentleman was, in, was spelt in flowers uh, on the side of his hearse. And this is St. Matthew's Church, uh, which is close by uh, to where I lived and where they grew up. And uh, this is them carrying... Charlie's uh, casket, coffin, toe pincher, coffin, into the church. And uh, St. Matthew's Church is a beautiful place. But actually, Reggie was allowed out for this, for this funeral. And I got a picture, two pictures actually. This is Reggie in a car heading to either to the church or from the church going to where they ultimately were buried at Chingford Cemetery. Um, here's that, this is the florist putting the uh, Charlie up in, in, uh, in uh, flowers on the side of the hearse. And on top, they were also big on boxing. You could see those red things are boxing gloves, actually, made out of flowers. And uh, here's one of the arrangements. You see it says Charlie in the middle. I knew the florist, uh, Carol McQueen florist, which was in Roman Road, which is not very far from you know Bethnal Green Road. It's actually the same road, just just uh, name something different once you cross over a certain area. And I and I became friendly with Carol McQueen and her staff, and they allowed me to take pictures of their uh, of the flower arrangements before uh, they took them away to the funeral home. Another piece of trivia you might be interested in, I found it fascinating, was that the Cray twins were two of the last prisoners ever to be imprisoned at the Tower of London. The Tower of London, the famous structure on the River Thames, uh, opened in the year 1100. And when the Cray twins were arrested and imprisoned for uh, uh, desertion, because they were, they were like drafted, and they showed up to the meeting, but then they left. <laughs> I guess the corporal tried to stop them, and they beat him. And then they, because uh, the, the Tower of London is east uh, in London, and they just walked home from there. So the Cray twins were two of the last prisoners ever to spend any time imprisoned in the Tower of London. So Charlie Cray died, and that was um, on April 4th, uh, 2000, of natural causes. Not Long after that, the funeral that I, I showed you the picture of, that was April 19th, so that was about two weeks after. Uh, a few months later, Reggie Cray was released from prison. Now, he, had, they, they, he and his brother Ronnie, the identical twins, had both been convicted for life uh, in 1969. And uh, Ronnie died in prison um, on March 1995. Reggie died outside of prison. They released him on uh, compassionate grounds. 
and he went to a hotel in Norwich and spent like his last couple of weeks with his wife who three they've been married about three years never consummated the marriage and because they're both actually bisexual or you know gay <laughs> whichever <clears throat> they both like men and um, and uh, and and Reggie Craig died of bladder cancer. He died on October first, twenty twenty. It was called the Townhouse Hotel in Norwich. My friend Darren uh, Bokes went there. And see, Darren, I'm finally using those pictures you took. It only took me fifteen years, but I am using those pictures you took of the hotel where uh, Reggie died. And uh, his funeral was actually held in the same place. The English brothers' uh, funeral home handled him, and his body was taken through uh, East London to uh, to you know where they grew up to St Matthew's Church. And remember, I told you I knew the florist, Carol McQueen. Well, that time I asked if I could come a little early and see them assembling the flower arrangements for Reggie's funeral. And they're like, sure. So I went, and I had my cal my ca my camera, my forty five millimeter ca camera, and uh, and I went to the florist beforehand, and this is them making arrangements for Reggie Gray's funeral. They're putting together the cross, the flower cross that's going to go on top of his coffin. There's a lot of pictures here, so bear with, bear with. And here's another one of them assembling that cross, and. So I met the, so as I mentioned, Carol McQueen's florist. This is the, the staff from Carol McQueen's florist. Very nice people. And here is more of the staff of Carol McQueen's florist in Roman Road. I don't think they're there anymore. And this is Carol McQueen. She was so nice. She, she said she was the florist to the firm, which is what they called, you know, the Cray gang. The Cray twins and their gang was called the firm in, uh, in East London. So um, here is the uh, funeral home. And you can see Char uh, Reggie Cray had a much more traditional East End funeral. He had the six uh, black horses pulling the carriage, the glass carriage. And his body was taken out of the funeral home. This is Reggie's casket, coffin. I keep saying that. Uh, there's a difference in the shape of it. And this is them putting, uh, they're, they, they're going to put him in the back of the glass hearse, the glass horse-drawn hearse. And this is them putting the, uh, the flowers on the uh, hearse. And Carol McQueen was there again. Oh, so they even painted, look at that, they painted the hoofs of the, her of the uh, horses black. I mean, they had the whole, you know, the plumes on the, you know, the... It was, it was a really, no one can do a funeral like the East End, I'm telling you. Uh, I'll just, I'm just going to randomly give you, show you some pictures of that. They, they're, they're, there's the, uh, the, the two hands together. That was sort of their logo. Uh, it was on that Cray Twin Supporters Night thing, you could see. So that was sort of their logo, was the, uh, was the hands together. And let's see, <laughs> these are some really good pictures. Okay, so I have to go backwards. Okay, so here's the minister and the top hat. This is the funeral director escorting the hearse with Reggie's body in it. There are the, the six black horses down Bethnal Green Road. It was really something to hear that uh, the clip clop of the horses, and a lot of gangs, a lot of gangsters attended too. A lot, you know, I mean, there was again. This is all all those guys in black, and uh, they had red armbands. I think they said R K F for uh, Reggie Cray funeral. Free at last. Reg. And this has a thing inside of it, Reg Cray, legend. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Last night after I finished the video, I was looking through footage and I found this clip of Reggie Cray being hauled by the six black horses as the funeral director and different pallbearers. Now in the next part, you see this limousine? I walk past it, there's a lady in the white coat, you'll see a guy in a blue coat and there's the blue coat there's me in the back see 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 that's me <laughs> it was just kind of funny to uh to spot that footage anyway back to uh what i was talking about 
And this is him carrying Reggie's coffin into the church, St. Matthew's Church. And I stood outside during the funeral, and they were playing uh, My Way on the, uh, on the uh, oh, here are the, uh, here are the red armbands. On the loudspeaker outside the church, they were uh, playing My Way for Reg's uh, services. And there's, again, some very colorful individuals that were in attendance. And this gentleman, I don't know who that is, but it was fascinating to look at. So this is them taking Reg into St. Matthew's Church. And, um, <laughs> okay, so I think I could go on now. Okay, so when I was at St. Matthew's Church, after the funeral, after Reggie was taken out, he was taken into a regular automobile hearse and driven to Chingford Cemetery, where he was going to be buried along with his wife, who committed, you know, un unalived herself. They say probably because of the antics of the Cray twins and she couldn't deal with it. And Ronnie Cray, who had died back in uh, 1995, five years earlier, they and their, I think their dad's buried there too, um, so they're at Chingford Cemetery, and then so is Charlie, and then Reggie's going to be taken there. So anyway, I'm waiting for them to take off, to go to the uh, cemetery with Reggie's coffin. And Carol McQueen, who I, you know, I walked over to say hello again, and she goes, do you want to go with? <laughs> like, what do you mean? She goes, do you want to go with us to the cemetery? Um, you can come with us, and you can, you can help us out. I'm like, really? She goes, yeah. So I went with them, and she let me get in the uh, in the forest vehicle. She let me go into this vehicle. I, she was driving, and she had helpers. I was in the back with helpers, and I was right behind them in the middle. And I got to ride in the funeral car to follow the hearse to Chinford Cemetery. Here are more pictures of the hearse from the funeral home, and. Uh, Oh, that was so fascinating too. You know, again, it was like Diana, you know, people were coming out. It was, it was well guarded, well guarded. And, uh, and when Reggie would pass by, everyone would applaud because I told you they were folk heroes. This is a newspaper stand, uh, in Roman road. And I asked if I could have that and they gave it to me. So that's that, that came from actually the day. And these are some of the funeral arrangements for Reggie. R&R, &R, Ronnie and Reggie, they had a club called the R&R &R Club in uh, the East End in Mile End Road near where I lived. Again, hero. A folk hero as well as hero to the neighborhood. And here's Free with the White Doves. Again, down below the uh, florist when they were getting ready to do the funeral. Uh, put, take them out, here's Reg. Reg, beloved. This is a close-up of that red uh, two hands arrangement I mentioned earlier. This is them putting together that uh, cross that's going to go on top of Reggie's uh, casket, the coffin, I keep saying it, and more of the arrangements. Of course, there were even arrangements there from Barbara Windsor. Get out of my pub! Is, I love her from EastEnders, the show EastEnders, but she was in the, the series of movies called Carry On Movies that were big in the 60s and the 70s, and this is her. And again, I'll tell you that story in a little bit. So anyway, I'm in the in the florist vehicle, and this is us in the funeral. This is me, see the wind? This is the wind windshield wiper, the windscreen wiper. I'm that close, and Reggie's uh, hearse, which is the automobile now, is up in front. So I'm really in the funeral cortege. And here's here's Carol McQueen again behind the wheel. She was so nice. She was so so nice. Yeah, come on. So I went. So anyway, okay, we get to the cemetery. And since we're florists, we are allowed to go up to the hole in the ground because we were bringing the floral arrangements. They let me help them. So I actually snapped a couple of pictures while we were there. And this is me helping carry the arrangements. And somebody stopped me, one of the security guards, because it was loaded with security guards. They go, what are you doing here? And Carol, she goes, he's with us. He's helping us out. And they're like, I got the camera and everything. And they were, I mean, it's a 35 millimeter camera. They were, uh, they were surprisingly, they let me go. And uh, this is Graveside. All those flowers that you saw earlier. 
And uh, here we go. So the, these guys are folk heroes. And um, remember I told you Ronnie Craig was buried there first. Here's a picture of, where, of uh, Ronnie's um, gravestone. And this is the, this is, these are the mourners, the crowd of mourners, graveside. And this is the hole in the ground where Ronnie, or where Reggie was being put. And this is Reggie in the hole in the ground. And I think this is the last photograph ever taken of Reggie Cray uh, before they sealed up his grave. So the legendary Cray twins, they were good looking twins, uh, but again, they were insane. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I mean, literally insane. It's so sad. Here's, I mean, they all, very famous. I mean, they all wrote books. You know, all of them did. That was, that was Reggie's. This is, this is uh, another Reggie book. And this is a book about Ronnie. And, um, God, there's so many things. Anyway, so these are their graves. Now, this is Ron and Reg, both uh, same birth date, different death dates. This is Charlie, who I mentioned, the first funeral I went to. And Francis. Oh, and also, this is in my neighborhood. This is where Francis and Reggie Cray got married. If you get a chance to see the movie Legend, that Tom Hardy movie, he plays both Ronnie and Reggie. I watched it again last night. It was insane. It was so good. Not, I mean, really, really well done. I uh, can't even stress how interesting that was and how interesting this time in my life was. I mean, Reggie Craig wrote me a letter from prison. I mean, give you an idea. This, there were press on top of this, uh, on top of this uh, building. I was taking pictures of the press as well. And I collect stuff on the Cray Twins, too. These are duplicates, or I should say phony things. A membership card to the, uh, to the Double R. Oh, this is the Regal, the Regal Club that they owned. And the Double R Club, which was in Bow Road, where I also lived. In fact... Findadeath.com, you ever read that website, started on a street called Tomlin's Grove. Uh, uh, I wish I remember what number that was, number two or something like that. I think Tomlin's, Tomlin's Grove, right off Bow Road, right by the Bow, Bow Magistrate's office. You know, I just, it, it was so cool to be in the East End of London, not because the Cray Twins are cool, they're romantic figures. And to know people who lived in the East End that really thought so highly of them, and then to, on a whim, write one of them and to end up being, um, you know, corresponding briefly with them and then going to that Cray Twin supporter night. It was all very bizarre. And then doing the tour and then Mad Frankie Fraser, you know, <laughs> uh, taking the idea. It was just an interesting time to live in the East End of London. These were, you know, quote, romantic figures, you know, good-looking young men who, you know, ran a protection racket and killed people in the Blind Beggar pub. One, you know, uh, Reggie Cray killed a guy named Jack McVitie in Stoke, uh, Stoke Newington, which is a, a few miles away. And then uh, Ronnie Cray killed a guy named George Cornell, another uh, gangster from an from a, uh, opposing gang, in the, in the Blind Beggar pub in Whitechapel. I, since then, whenever I go to London, we have a death hag meetup. We always do it at the Blind Beggar Pub because um, it's a fun place to go. It's interesting and it's East End lore. Uh, yeah, the Blind Beggars, I love it anyway. It's just, uh, it's just kind of an interesting history. You can't erase history, like it or not. History is history. This is another thing I own, and this was a uh, this was a birthday card from 
Ronnie Cray, to Reggie Cray. I just sometimes I'll get weird things. And I, I guess Reggie had it up on his bulletin board because you can see there's bulletin board holes in it. And it's, you know, they weren't good at writing. And this says, uh, God bless Reg from Ron. And I don't know what that says. But whatever it was, he didn't like it. It could have been. Maybe it was a, uh, a birthday card that uh, Reggie sent Ron. But, so, living in the East End was really interesting. And this little chapter of my life was really interesting. And I'll tell you one last story. So, this story. Um, my ex won an award for a television award. And... It was awkward because he was up against somebody else and he won it and um, I was left at the table with the other wine and Barbara Windsor and another television um, personality by the name of Dale Winton saw how awkward it was and the both of them came over and, and you know, were really kind and nice to me and, and talked to me and got me out of that really awkward situation, which is weird because I didn't know these guys. I mean, they were nice. I met them, but I didn't know them. So afterwards, my ex is swept away because he won some award and he's being interviewed by the press and I'm all on my own. And I walk to the bar area and Barbara Windsor is there and she was friends with them. In fact, she wrote a foreword to one of the books about Ronnie Cray because uh, she dated the older brother, Charlie Cray, for a while. And Barbara Windsor, as I mentioned, was in the Carry On movies and um, she was very dismissive about their relationship, but she, she was involved with them. And another thing, because Cray's owned nightclubs, and Judy Garland was a, was a person who went to the nightclub. They really loved the celebrity cachet, Joan Collins, uh, Shirley Bassey. They, they're all like sort of regulars at these nightclubs that the Cray twins owned. And um, anyway, I'm getting, so as was Barbara Windsor. And so after my ex wins this comedy award, and I'm, I'm alone, and Barbara Windsor's, and, and I had some drinks, I'll be honest with you. And I still didn't know how cool things were there and things you should be aware of. I was, like, so awkward. So I'm with Barbara Windsor alone in this bar area, and I don't know what to say. It's Again, I don't want to know her. I just wanted to meet her because I liked her, and I like EastEnders. And so I said to her, so you're friends with Reggie Cray? And <laughs> she kind of looked at me like... All right. And I said, I said, I, I've always wanted to meet Reggie Cray. Uh, I, you know, I corresponded briefly with him. And, uh, and then I said, well, I mean, I don't mean you, I don't mean, I don't want you to, I don't want you to introduce me to Reggie. I was just thinking, well, cause you knew him. And I was like, it was so awful. And I just kept talking. And finally she just turned and walked away from me. I mean, she was very kind, didn't say anything, but just went, <laughs> just walked away and of course nobody you know believed that I even said that I had the nerve to say that to her but um but uh, yeah Barbara Windsor also in my museum before we shut it down and moved out to the desert I had like a true crime uh uh area of you know OJ Simpson and John Lee Gacy and etc and I had a little Cray twins uh area of stuff like that and and I, a friend of mine by the name of Richard Driscoll sent me several things which were on display there. And everything's in storage now. But when we reopen, there will be a Cray Twins exhibit. I've got letters that were written by Reg Cray. I have uh, Ron Cray's cigarette case. I have Ron Cray's bow tie. I have a watch that was Ronnie Cray's watch that was given by Charlie as a birthday present. The watch got damaged in Broadmoor and Ron gave it back to Charlie to get it fixed. And Charlie, who was short on Monday, ended up money, probably for that, the reason they were trying to raise money at that one time, um, sold it. So, uh, so anyway, I got to thank Richard Driscoll for those items and I owe you favors big time. Uh, yeah. The Cray Twins, the Cray Twins Supporters Night, um, the tour that didn't work out, the Blind Beggar Pub. It was a fascinating time, and I don't regret a second of it. Uh, and it's a great story. So I hope, I, I hope you enjoyed this, my East End tour of uh, photographs. Thank you for watching. Sayua!